welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rianne, and this is The Groom, and of course we had to do a Christmas-themed horror movie as it was just Christmas, so we watched Krampus. Definitely not the first time that we've watched it, but we wanted to revisit it, and um, I ended up caving and buying the digital copy on Amazon so we could watch it for every Christmas. It's a gratification, and now it's in my clutches, so yep. I'll tell the story of Krampus. Sure. Since I grew up with the story of Krampus, being terrified by it as a small child. Krampus is essentially the evil, like, anti-Santa Claus. That instead of coming down the chimney to bring you presents, Krampus comes down the chimney with a giant hook and a bunch of evil toys and murders you. Pretty Which, much. Were the evil toys in the original story? Yes. The evil toys and the evil elves are in the original Krampus story. Because Krampus just is, oh, frightening. You the antithesis the... of Santa. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> um. So yeah, so the essentially Krampus is like this like dirty version of Santa Claus with giant demon devil horns coming out the top. It is the thing of freaking nightmares. Okay? And being told this as a, as a small child scared the crap out of me. But it's mainly, it's like a Eastern European, like German, Austrian, kind of like, like it's, it's, it's in Eastern, Eastern Europe. My Romanian grandmother knew it. Um, she told me the story and it's pretty much, it's a story meant to scare kids into being good. Instead of saying like, Hey, if you're good, Santa's going to bring you nice stuff. They go, if you're bad, Krampus is going to come through the chimney with a giant hook and a chain and take you to hell. So it's awesome. And this, honestly, this movie actually does a really good, really good job of, like, taking the myth mythology of Krampus and turning it into, like, on screen. And if you've never seen it, look up the Krampus parades. Oh, the Krampus parades are Krampus amazing. parades are awesome. I wish we had those here in the States. That would be awesome. D's in Romania. She could have went to one. That's true. Should have said something to her. <laughs> um... But yeah, so uh, the premise of the story is Max, our young protagonist here, is still, he's at that bordering age between does he really believe in Santa, does he not believe in Santa, and it's around, I believe it's Christmas Eve, I think it was, or the day before Christmas Eve, I can't remember. It was either Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas Eve, extended family's coming over, he doesn't like his cousins, his uncle's kind of a douchebag, you know, everybody's kind of like, they're a you know, suburban family where nobody likes each other, that whole thing. But he has his German grand grandmother who he seems to gravitate to. They have a very special bond and, you know, they're preparing for Christmas. Grandma's baking. They went out. Uh, he was in a major play where he beat the crap out of another kid, which was awesome. And his dad goes, best, best line ever. Did you have to drop kick him into the manger? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> but um, so they... You know, they're preparing for Christmas and stuff like that. And we get a really good scene of the his older sister walking to her boyfriend's house, which is a few blocks away. And in the background, which this movie did a great job of putting stuff in the background. I really, I really love that. You see the Krampus jumping from house to house to house to house. She left out a big part that Max, well, Max you know, the... had his letter for Santa all good to go <laughs> and... His cousins are obviously just trying to antagonize him and calling him out. And he wrote really sweet things in the letter. Like he wishes he and his sister were close like they used to be. Mm -hmm. And they used to hang out and play together. He wishes his parents were, you know, falling back in love. Because obviously there's a big rift between them. Just everyone's really unhappy. And it's not just the stereotypical unhappiness you kind of get around the holidays regardless. It's... It's some deep-seated stuff that has been brewing for a very long time. Like, the dad works too much, because, like, the mom's like, are you really going to take a phone call now? And he's like, no, I'm, I, you said I said I wouldn't travel, but I still have to answer calls. And it's one of those things where you see in, like, all the typical suburban families where the dad works too much and the mom's overstressed and the house looks like Martha Stewart threw up in it. Mm -hmm. Another great line from this movie. And uh, her sister's family comes, and they're not so well off. They bring... An aunt that the mom is less than thrilled to see, who yeah. just kind of like critiques every little thing, picks everything apart, but then gets, you know, really insulted when she's called out for it. Drinks a lot. Drinks a lot. And just like, no one's getting along. Everything's terrible. Max ends up 
getting his letter from Santa back from his cousins, ripping it up, throwing it away. After his grandma kind of repeatedly keeps reinforcing, like, no, Santa's real. I believe in Santa. You know, you need to send him your letter. And that's when all hell breaks loose. We start to see the beginning of the end, and we start to realize there's something real off about the freak snowstorm. There's no power. They can't really see anyone's houses. And then... And Grandma keeps saying... Keep the fire keep hot. Keep the fire hot. Yeah. And so nobody listens. Yeah, she knows. She retells her story, mm-hmm. and uh, about about her experience with the with the Krampus. But I guess we'll leave it off there, as it is spoiler free. Um, what did you like about this movie? I really, really enjoyed the creature design of all the little bad characters. <laughs> the little gingerbread men. The little like, there's a lot of humor in this movie, <laughs> as well as there's like a lot of jumps, and there's a lot of things that are just genuinely unsettling to look at, like a certain Jack in the Box. Oh, <clears throat> oh that is nightmare fuel. It was fuel. so creepy, <sighs> and there's like a an angel that's very unsettling, and with the tongue, just no. I thought, you know, you get to Krampus see looked great. like glimpses of Krampus, and then when you finally get to see him, and then you finally get to see close-ups of his face, like, there was a lot of effort put in that, and he just looks great. Like, not, you know, he's cute or anything, like, he, he genuinely looks pretty terrifying. terrifying. He looks like he's supposed to look. Yeah, I, I liked that. I like that they didn't, uh spare any like there's always those unspoken rules in horror movies where you don't go after certain types of characters there wasn't that in this movie Mm -hmm. at all so that was neat it seemed like it was real yeah the the real emotions and the real reactions to the situation people are going to act irrationally you know but you always had that one person who's like no stop think about this this is what we got to do Everything like that. Mm-hmm. I liked that this is definitely not the happy ending that you're expecting. No spoilers there, but... Yeah. it's That's unsettling in itself. That's my favorite part. My yeah. favorite part is the ending. You can't talk about the ending, but that's my favorite part. The way this movie ends is such a... It makes you go back to the very beginning of the movie and be like, well, was this, was this all blah, 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 blah? And you're like holy shit but for me personally the ending was the best and i gotta go with the i gotta go with you the costume designs were great the creatures were awesome the effects were good the you know i i just absolutely love that about it the realism of the reaction of the char- characters in it was you know the parents trying to like not tell the kids what's going on the kids go and just freaking tell us what's going on yeah i really i really like that it brought a little bit of real realism to it all right which thing did you hate because we talked about a bunch of stuff during this movie that we did not like did we yes there's a couple of things like they seem like nitpicky things but honestly they kind of drive you nuts after a little while was it the the german the pronunciation no no the fact that grandma knew english but kept speaking in german it seemed kind of like she just didn't want to use english associate with the sister's family Uh maybe like she's just like i I don't i don't care maybe it's because she knew what was going to happen so maybe you know like uh i'll just watch out for my family kind of thing oh here comes the cat (laughs) there's a cat Um, here the other, the other thing that we both talked about is there's a moment where there's a big hole in the side of the house. Yeah. Okay. And the front door gets boarded up and they're like and they're like go back in, go back in and it's like it's putting the slats back in to blockade the door. Like there's a giant hole over there. Like where bay windows used to be yeah. like just L- like step out. Like in the next ro- in the room to, to the left of the door is a giant hole where something like crashed through. You know, no, d- none of this, you can't go back in. They made another door. Yeah. <laughs> they made their own door and left it open. 
And it was just like this whole thing. I'm just like, you, you, you didn't have to do that. Because it was the emotions of it and stuff like that. I guess you would you would forget that the holes in the house. But it's we like, didn't. Eh. It happens so close together. It we're would, like, it's, yeah, but there's a big hole in the house. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, if that had happened a more significant time ago, then yeah, maybe we forgot about the hole in the side of the house. But you're not going to forget that. But, I mean... That, like, you know, I... That's, like, nitpicky stuff. You'd have to nitpick something, because I really love this movie. This is one of my favorite holiday horror movies. Like, one of my favorite Christmas horror movies ever. And, uh, it's just... I just... I love this. Just, I, and I, I think I'm biased, because of the Krampus story and growing up with it and stuff like that. I think I'm kind of biased. Well, Krampus looks great. And there's like 700 Krampus movies apparent, apparently. There are a lot of Krampus movies. Apparently there's ones with sequels too. So we may have to watch them too. Um, but what did I you I felt dislike? like sometimes I just couldn't sympathize with Max's character because he got so whiny. Yes. And that was a problem. Because, you know, you're supposed to really be rooting him on. And I was just like, mm-hmm. Can they take him sooner? <laughs> like, not to be a dick, but like, shut up. <laughs> you know, stop whining. You know what you did. And also, like, I feel like this is all his fault. No, I don't. I don't feel as though ripping up a note you were gonna write to Santa warrants this kind of hell. That's how Krampus finds you. Yeah, but like, he was the last one who believed. There's kids that oh, like cats on fire believed. and stuff, and I don't think the Krampus comes for them. Oh, the one part when they're like, do you think they went after them because he painted the cat? And I was like, oh, that kid deserved it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Suddenly I don't feel bad for that kid anymore. Yeah. But um, it was like really funny. That was another great part was the humor sprinkled into this was really good mm -hmm. it wasn't overly hu humor so it wasn't like a Shaun of the dead kind of movie but it was a horror movie with funny moments in it like the drop kicking the kid into the manger there, there's a really horrific part and the reaction is you gotta be kidding me and i was like that's you know a believable reaction when you're just in shock like what the family <laughs> christmas photo Oh God! The that family was so Christmas funny. photo is great. And the only reason, like, I I don't want to, I don't mean to spoil this for people, but you, but if you watch this, you need to pay attention to the very beginning of the uh, the very beginning of the movie when they come home and the mom's hanging the Christmas portrait because the mom and the dad are standing like off to the right of Santa, and the daughter's standing off to the left of Santa, and Santa's just like. Looking yeah. at looking at the daughters <laughs> like a full bro blown creep, <laughs> like a full blown creep. I was like, oh, that's so great. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I really like this movie. I really, it's, I think it's got a good balance of a little bit of humor and with really good horror, horror with general really good fear. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was the 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 puppeteering, yeah, co costume stuff. There was a little bit of CGI in there. But it wasn't a lot, and it was only to animate an inanimate object, and I think they did it really well by only using that little bit of it. Um, there wasn't really any blood in it, was there? Other than, other than bite, but you no. don't really see that. Like there really wasn't a lot of blood, but no. it felt like it was like terrifying. There wasn't really a lot of like, like splashing gore. blood everywhere. Yeah, there wasn't anything. really a lot of like gore, but there was. It was a terrifying movie though which was that's pretty good to do that without having any visceralness to it yeah that's right I like that use a big word oh, good for you. i feel like next year we should definitely do uh a lesser known movie i'm voting rare exports i really like that movie and i i feel like i should share that with you it's a christmas horror movie yes what is rare exports it's a lot of santa I don't know. A lot of Santa. <laughs> Santa Slay. Yeah, Santa Slay is amazing. Santa Slay with Bill Goldberg. I'd have to say that's my favorite Christmas movie. He's so good, though. He's so that good. That movie's so Steady ridiculous. Santa. I know. But, um, yeah. I mean, we'll figure it out. We got, we got 364 it. days. Mm-hmm. Until next so, Christmas. So, what would you rate this? Um... 
a scale of one to five. Mm -hmm. One to five. Scale of one to five, I would give this a four. Okay, and I'm scaling it based on not all horror movies. I'm scaling this based on holiday horror movies. Not just Christmas, but, you know, like all holiday themed horror movies. I give this like a four. I think it's a really good, solid. The thing you can, you can show this to anybody. Okay, and people aren't gonna be like, oh, all gross. Oh, there's blood and guts everywhere. It's That's true. Still horror refined, and you can still show this to people, and it's not gonna be. They're not gonna be like, oh, this is so gross because of all the blood and guts. But it's still gonna scare the hell out of them. And I feel that with the cast they have, a lot more people might be open to watching it. Yeah. It has Todd Packer from The Office. It has and Ben from, you know, Parks and Rec. Adam Scott, and, and it has the. Uh, the, the mom from Hereditary. Yeah, I can't the mom remember from, her name right now. Uh, and Tony, that lady, Tony Collette. Tony Collette. And the um, <clears throat> the lady that played Aunt Dorothy. I know she's been in like a lot of sitcoms, and I can't remember her name, but she was wonderful in this movie, just being so despisable of a character. Oh, the one that makes you, the one that reminds me of my mother. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yep. Um the red hair i'd probably give this if we're rating it just based on holiday horror holiday mm -hmm. horror are we specifically basing it on christmas horror i based it on all holiday themed horror movies i'd probably give it like a 3.5 out of 5 i i really like the cast i really like the creatures i obviously really like the story i love that there's humor in it and it was a little unsettling at some points with the monsters what do you think is better, this or Thanks Killing? Oh. Mm -hmm. Hard hitting questions. That's a hard one. Um, I mean, there's a lot of humor in Thanks Killing. There and this is. definitely had a bigger budget, so I feel like that's kind of an unfair comparison. Actually, this this movie was fifteen million dollars to make. I feel as though Thanks Killing was significantly less I feel than as that. Of, I feel as though Thanks Killing was fifteen thousand. It was like fifteen dollars, and I loved it. <laughs> I love Thanksgiving. Um, so yeah, I uh, three point five and a four out of five. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. It's a it's a, it's a C average. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so I, I found this. Uh, I bought it on Prime because every time there's a holiday, every movie that's associated with it is no longer available to stream for free, quote unquote. Even though you have a Amazon Prime membership, which is shady as fuck, but now I, I've, I've wanted this in my collection for a while, so now I have it, even though it's not a physical copy, but also I I couldn't wait. I needed it, and mm. I wanted to watch it immediately. I think that it, no, it's not on Netflix mm -hmm. right now. I can't think of anywhere else it would be. Maybe, maybe Hulu? Who knows? I didn't even look there, but that's where I found it. If you have not yet, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Reanimator. Oh, yeah, that's right. You have a TikTok. I have now. a TikTok. Now, if you like cat content, ooh, you in for a time. You're, wel you're welcome, world. You can find my solo reviews as well as reviews with the groom and uh, podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. We're going to find you. You can find me on Twitch under Repeat Ray Animator. You can also find me on TikTok under Repeat Ray Animator. And you can find me on Twitter under Repeat Groom Ray. It's three different options. That's that's very nice. That's scary. So. It's scary <laughs> that I branch out into the world mm -hmm. three different ways. <laughs> 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 but... We hope that you all had a wonderful Christmas, a happy Hanukkah. You're going to have a great new year. If you don't celebrate any of these things, we hope that you're just having a, a wonderful, good time, <laughs> good time a, a good, good time. December. You're staying well. You're staying as happy as you can. And uh, hopefully 2021 is a bit nicer to everyone. Hopefully. Yeah. But we love you guys so much. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Surprise. Camera's on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. We're going to review a Christmas horror movie. We're so original. Mm-hmm. Wink.
Look at how full my beard is. Look at that. It's quite the chin bush I'm growing. Mm. I know. You like it. I hate it. You're the, it's the only reason why I keep it is you. It's a wonder bra for your face. <laughs> a push-up bra.